Hi, my name is Missy Mist. I am a Miami based recording artist. I actually started some years back. I was a teenager and I happened to be infatuated with LL Cool J. Yes, LL Cool J. <laughs> So he was actually performing here in Miami, Florida, and I begged my mom to please, please, please take me to the radio station so that I could meet him and get an autograph. So my mom, being my mom, she said, sure, let's go. So we packed up and we drove down to 99 Jams, which was, um, I believe it was, was off of 50 Samad Street, I believe it was, but it was the first um, 99 Jams building, the tiny little one. And um, we waited outside, and LL Cool J was still live on the air, uh, giving his whereabouts and what he was going to do that night, and you know, basically giving all the information about the um, the concert for that night. And there was a security guard on the outside, and my mom went, went up to him, "Excuse me, can you get my daughter an autograph of LL Cool J, please?" And he says, "Sure, I can." So he asked me what my name was, and I told him. And he says, you have a nice sounding voice. Your voice is very clear. Would you, do you happen to sing or do you rap? So I actually was a student of New World School of the Arts. My major was theater. So I said, yes, you know, I'm a theater major and um, you know, I, I don't actually sing, but I can do a little something and I rap. He says, well, I can do one better. I'm gonna try and get LL Cool J's uh, autograph for you, but what I'm gonna do is hook you up. So my mom looked over and said, what do you mean by hook her up? And he says, I'm gonna get you the producer that's on the inside. His name is Candyman. He owns the base station, which was at that point a local teenage disco. There was Luke's Pack Jam, and then the rivalry was uh, Candyman's base station. So he did just that. He went inside and he brought out Candyman. And Candyman, you know, said, yes, how are you, blah, 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 gave me his phone number. And he says, can you rap? And he said, he said, you can rap. I didn't actually say that to Pearson, but the security guard, but I said, yeah, I can do a little something. So he says, I'm not gonna put you on the spot now. I'm gonna allow you to rap for my producer. His name is Eric Griffin. So uh, basically we went through that. I called maybe, a week later or so and I spoke with Eric and Eric was different. Eric was very outgoing. He was direct in your face. He says, can you rap? Let me hear you now. And this is over the phone. So I did my best rendition of what I thought at the point that particular time a female LL Cool J would sound like and he liked it. And the rest is history. From there we cut Make It Mellow. Make It Mellow charted very well. It was placed on uh, Bay Station Records. Um, it's horrible to say that Noberto was shortly uh, murdered after that. So he actually didn't see, uh, you know, the, the fulfillment of his little protege, which was me, Missy. Um, we then did Getting Bass, and Getting Bass was actually my launching record. And I call it launching because it plateaued me to an area where other major labels were really, really interested in me as an artist. I was signed by Atlantic Records, Sylvia Rome, and from there, uh, that didn't work out well. They basically shelved me initially. And Skip Miller and Miller London then picked me up through RCA. I was the first female rap artist to uh, actually score a six-figure deal. I had a publishing deal, and it, it made, actually, it made Newsweek magazine. And that's really ironic because in my rap, one of the raps that I wrote, I say I made Newsweek magazine, but I hadn't at that point. But I lived up to that. I made Newsweek magazine, which was wonderful. Um, I don't know many people that has actually done what I what I did regarding the type of deal that I had, the points that I had. The if I had that deal now and the deal actually flourished, I would be a millionaire because they don't make those type of deals today. Artists, they just don't cut them. But we were really shrewd and we knew what we wanted and we went for it. Needless to say, Miami at that point in time was not really um, looked upon as real rap. I'm from New York, from the Bronx, New York, and people in New York used to call it corny rapping. Anything from the South was corny. But we knew that we had something original and that I remember with this being such a male dominated field uh, I did a show at 
um, Skylight Express, but I think it was called Stardom for Adults and Skylight Express for Teenagers, I believe. And um, Eric mentioned, Missy Miss is looking for dancers, so uh, this group of guys came up, and uh, there were four at the time. And they went on stage and they did their little dance routine and everybody went crazy. And Eric was like, yep, yep, Missy, that this is your group, this is your group. He chose my dancers. Meanwhile, Eric can't dance. Anyway, so we, they come to my house and we practice, practice, practice for this dance, for this particular show that I had. And um, everybody that was on this show was at Studio 183 here in Miami. And everyone that was on the show were all guys, which often happened. I very seldom perform with other females. Um, there just weren't a lot at the time, so that's just the way that it was. But um, we went on stage, we did the show there, and there were like maybe two people in the audience, I would say. <laughs> so we did the show, and I decided at the end of the show that this group, this, these guys weren't for me. They just weren't for me. It just wasn't a good look for me. So. Eric insisted, no, 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 they're good for you, they'll be great, blah, blah, blah. So I'm the one who had to deal with these guys. So I was with them most often. They come to my house again, we uh, you know, go through our whole routine, and I tell them, look, more than likely, this is gonna be you guys' last performance with me because you know, I just don't think the chemistry is right. They practiced the entire routine with me. I mean, we, we had it down pat. We do the next show, which I believe was at uh, Six Flags. I, I think it was called Six Flags at the time. We go on stage. They do an, a completely different routine from the one that we practice. So I look like a complete idiot because I'm doing different dances and thinking that they're fitting in. They're doing something completely different behind me. They paid me back, but that was their last show. <laughs>